Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at patch 2.2 for Wild Rift which is only six days away now so we're getting closer and closer to the launch of patch 2.2. Uh, Riot released a dev diary last night releasing all the information and kind of teasers to new champions, new items, new skins and a whole lot more. So hopefully you will enjoy this video, it's going to be a more in-depth look. If you want to have a look at the video uncut and not paused at all, if you just want to watch it and chill out, then I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys. But without further ado, let's head straight into it. As I said, we're going to be looking a deeper dive into this and give my opinions and what I think about these changes and how they will affect the game itself. Obviously, you got Ramus coming out soon, which they're already teased. you got new skins and you have the roll queue, which they've just teased there. So... Biggest patch yet. Biggest patch yet as well, which is really, really exciting. Obviously, the Americas, they finally released it to Once America, North America, and South America. The open beta. 29th of March, I believe it is. We're thrilled to finally launch Wild Rift in your region. To get you caught up to speed, we're introducing a special limited time event called Wild Welcome. It's a pretty cool event, to be fair. With this event, so the whole reason why they're doing this event for America, for people who don't know, um, is that people that use the VPN in America um, to be able to go onto the servers on Europe, on Asia, um, was none of their stuff's getting transferred over. So all their wild cores, all their skins, everything like that, they'll be refunded all the wild cores, which is completely fine. That's understandable. But in terms of their progression and their skins and everything, nothing will be transferred over for them. This is like an exclusive America event to kind of catch them up and give them a bit of a, I guess, head start to um, everyone else when it first came out for them. But it's a nice little way to reward the Americas to say, you know, thank you for waiting. Here's a nice cool event, um, which is pretty cool. It's all welcome, you know. And other content faster to help you get started. Of course. So yeah, they're able to level up faster, get champions faster. So it doesn't feel like they've lost out at all, if that makes sense. Arabic support, pretty cool. Very soon, we'll be adding in-game support for Arabic. It's taken us some time to get it ready because we've adjusted the game's UI layout completely so it should feel natural to navigate around. It's just to do with UI stuff, Arabic support, all pretty cool. The more people can play. Now, this is a big one. New champions, guys. New champions. Is that Wild Rift has a lot of humanoid champs, not as many monstrous types. So let's take a peek into the cave. Here we go. New champions. Let's see what we got. The first one, big boy. It's Galio, you know it right, big massive ultimate you just saw there can slam down on the enemies, has a little dash as well, a taunt as well with the, oh my god this champion is so insane, you have Ramus, the nice little speed ball, beautiful, beautiful, look at, oh god, imagine Ramus coming into your lane and doing that, you have the assassins now, so you got Karzix which is one of the Predators in a new event that they teased. Again, another jungler. Really, really nice assassin that can go invisible. Basically, one shot everyone. Rengar, everyone's a nightmare. Comes out from the bushes. Starts slamming, one shotting people. As you can see, Jinx is absolutely one shot there. Rip ADCs in this patch for sure. Renekton as well. Big, massive tank crocodile in the top lane. You love to see it. You love to see it. Going back on the uh, the champions a bit there, I thought I'd play it out a bit for you guys so you can see the new champions a bit more. There you go. Yeah, Galio is a support slash mid laner, kind of a tank that has this magic resist shield to kind of start off the game with. I don't know if they're going to do the same thing as what they did in uh, PC League. But again, what you saw there, uh, small glimpses, is ultimate so he can slam down um, on a target, you can pick any one of your teammates. It's like a global ultimate. You slam down, you knock up enemies. As you can see, Zinjar was knocked up, which is really, really nice. And then what you can do is you can then dash into the team like that, get a nice little knock up again. And then you have your second ability, which is your taunt, which can taunt enemies around them. So Galio is this big, massive tank that can basically taunt all of them and be like, look, attack me instead, attack me instead, you know. They can slam down, knock up enemies around. So really, really nice mid laner. Could do a lot of damage as well, uh, but can also work in the support role, which is really, really nice. Actually, really, really nice champion. Obviously, Ramus, 
just comes rolling around everywhere, as you can see from the entrance. Uh, he is a jungler. He's mainly used against, like, four AD comps. He has, like, inbuilt armor. He builds a lot of armor because it gives him extra stats, which is really, really nice to see. And you can see his new ultimate ability here as well. He starts rolling in. And can, he can now jump and be a bit more mobile. But yeah, imagine getting ganked by Ramus. A bit of a pain. Again, as I said, Karzik's a new jungler. Nice little ability. You can see there that he uses like an ability there, which kind of makes him a little less visible on your screen. But this is basically his ultimate ability, which makes him go visible. Now, the cool thing about Karzix is that every time you reach your ultimate ability, you're able to evolve one of your other abilities. Very, very similar to, I guess you can say Kaiser in a way, but with Kaiser, you need AD or attack speed or something like that. But with Karzix, you just need to level up. So when you get to level 5, you can choose whether you upgrade your first, second, or third ability. And their abilities will basically be empowered. So your leap, your third ability, the one you just saw in this, um, it can go further. And it can also reset upon takedown. You have the Q, which is you know more range. Or you have the W, which um, takes out more spikes, which like fires out more spikes. Actually, a very, very good champion. Rengar, this this champion, this champion will be the end of solo queue. Honestly, this champion is insane. You can basically go invisible. You just saw there. You can see that Rengar had a little bit of uh, invisibility there. And with the invisibility, he can basically run around. A bit like Evelyn in a way, but not as crazy as Evelyn. Because Evelyn is basically invisible the whole time. Uh, with Rengar, you can go invisible with your ultimate. You can dash in on a target. And as you can see, basically one shot the AD carry. So if you're against a Rengar and you're an AD carry, then a little bit unfortunate. And then this bag boy Renekton, big massive top lane, top lane crocodile. Bit of a tank. As you can see, his ultimate, he gains more HP. Very good 1v1 duelist and a very good team fighter as well, which is pretty awesome. What happens when two of League's deadliest champions clash in the most dangerous of games? Now, this is the next Without event that they teased, which is pretty cool. Rengar and Kha'Zix event. You into the ancient rivalry between Kha'Zix and Rengar to determine who is predator and who is prey. We're also pretty introducing cool. a new gameplay system specifically for this event. I wonder if there's anything teased here. Doesn't look like anything's teased. You can see that there's a little bit of an item change here, but nothing else is really teased. But you can see there's like a little cool in-game event. Which is like if you kill the other person, then you can do re get rewards and everything as well for it, which is pretty cool. Kind of similar to PC League. PC League has this sort of thing as well. So if you're playing uh, Senna and you're against Thresh, if the Thresh takes down the Senna or if Senna takes down the Thresh, it's kind of like an in-game reward system but you don't actually get any stats or anything like that for it nothing crazy like that just a cool little in-game event that happens that uh, kind of like rewarding in a way as we said earlier this year we're looking to flesh out wild rift's item pool patch 2.2 brings a few new items and tweaks including refreshing the item icons so they more closely match the ones only this is pretty cool let's dive in we're adding frozen heart. This is really, really cool. So they're basically updating all of the item icons for Wild Rift to make it look very, very similar to the PC counterpart. So as you can see, Trinity Force, that's the first item. It's changed the icon. And that's Spirit Visage. Righteous Glory hasn't changed. You've got Frozen Heart, Force of Nature, Guardian Angel. Um, these are these are the main things. They're basically update. They're adding new items and they're updating the look of the items. So hopefully it won't look too too different, but they're just updating it to just make sure it's kind of similar to the PC League version. But Frozen Heart has been added to the game, which is really, really good. Really good armor tank item that has an aura around you. So if you're close to a champion, it will reduce their attack speed, which is really, really nice. Force of Nature, which is focused on cooldown reduction. Uh, Making the another magic resist item, which we've been asking for for a long, long time. And Sunfire Ages, which is very, very, very similar to um, Sunfire Cape, they just add, I think they just adjusted a few more things, which we'll probably look into later on. Item pool for tank players. Sapphire Crystal now has a mana This is the big one. Stack earlier and evolve your tier of the goddess items sooner. This is a huge one. So what they've done for Sapphire Crystal now is that Sapphire Crystal only builds out of tier of the goddess. So what they're able to do is, you can see on the right here, the mana charge passive, 
this is exactly the same as a tier of the goddess passive. So at the start of the game now, you can spend 500 gold and start with a sapphire crystal. It'll give you ability haste, it'll give you some max mana. You can start charging tier of the goddess at the start of the game, which is, which is huge, to be fair. You don't have to go back early now to start stacking your tiers like an Ezreal or like an Orianna. You can just buy the sapphire crystal, start stacking early game. It's, it's crazy. Very, very similar to League Counterpart. Again, they did very, um, the same thing with League of Legends. They reduced the price of Tier of the Goddess on the PC version, and they made it so you can buy it at the start of the game, which is really, really nice. I see Gragas has started attacking his tier at level 6 Machine, with a new Sapphire Crystal. Sapphire. Uh, another few things to note here as well. You've got some of the updated icons at the bottom. Uh, Zonya's Hourglass is down there. Death Cap, Morella Nomicon, and Void Staff. Uh, obviously, Oblivion Orb has been updated a little bit, amplifying Tome as well. But this is another cool thing as well. Making it a more accessible choice to non-mana users. So the Sheen is now not being built off of Mana Crystal, so you can just flat out buy Sheen now. It seems like, which is really really cool. So it was a lot cheaper, as you can see, nine hundred gold, but you get the effect of Sheen for a cheaper price. But there's no mana, which most of the time you don't really need mana anyway. Which again, this is the exact same thing as what they did for League PC, which is really, really nice, really cool change. Outside of items, the Summer Spell Ghost wasn't seeing a lot of use, so we're updating it as League PC has. Again, another update for to make it similar to League PC version. But the buff lasts longer now, and on takedown, your speed boost will be reapplied. So now everyone can get excited, just like Jinx. Really, really cool change to Ghost. Um, as mentioned there, the movement speed is reduced for Ghost, but basically what happens is if you get a takedown, so a kill or assist. The ghost effects get gets reset, so it'll basically start from the beginning again. So you can ghost for I don't know five seconds. You can have two seconds left. If you get a kill, then it will go back to zero again. So you can you know keep ghosting and keep uh, going basically, which is kind of cool. Again, as they said, very similar to League PC Finally, version. We're changing the way champions play with higher attack speed. Now this is a change I'm not really too sure about. A bunch of attack speed basically makes you feel like you have no wind up on your attacks. Giving you an easy way to flawlessly kite or chase as a high powered marksman. They're nerfing attack speed for marksman, which I'm not really too sure about. We're adjusting this so it's not so forgiving. We'll be keeping an eye on win rates closely to make sure it doesn't feel too bad for dual winners. Now, now, as an ADC main, I'm not too sure about this. I think they're basically making it so you can't freely move an attack speed. It looks like they're adding. Well, they do well. We don't know obviously any other information. The thing that I think it might be is that they're adding some sort of delay. If you compare the first video here, you can see that the virus is auto attacking. Sorry, that's a little bit too far. You can see that the virus is auto attacking very freely whilst kiting. Like this, you can see that they're freely moving, you know, able to kite around and everything with the attack speed, which is a good thing. You know, you want to be able to, if you have loads of attack speed, you want to get rewarded for it. You want to be able to um, attack and move, attack and move. We're adjusting this so it's not so forgiving. So yeah, now compared to this video, you can see that Kaiser is trying to move, but also trying to attack at the same time. And you can see that we'll most of the time the they're moving and, sure and they're not actually it. attacking as much. You can see is I, I don't know. We'll have to see what the changes do, but it looks like a nerf to, to AD carries overall again, which is a kind of disappointing thing. Over the past few months, we've been gathering your feedback about quality of life features. Quality of life features are always welcome, which is really, really nice. You, and we're adding some features to make your experience better. We're adding new pings to give you a way to... This is huge, by the way. This whole thing about new pings, one of the biggest things I think we needed in the game. You got attack, you got danger, you got on my way, which is awesome. You now have an enemy missing ping, which is so huge, especially for PC League. Because at the moment, you have to type it every single time. You know, top missing, mid missing, or you just have to spam danger ping, which could mean anything, to be fair. Now they have a unique ping, which means that if someone moves out of your lane, say you're against like a running soul mid lane, you could put enemy missing with the running soul, and then the top laner and the mid laner knows that the enemy's missing, so they can kind of be a bit more careful. Again, you've got the group ping as well. So you can do, you know, group of dragon, group of baron, which is another cool, unique ping. And you've got enemy vision as well, which is another big one. 
to if someone wards a bush or something, you can say, enemy has vision here, so someone can use a sweeper in that bush to clear the vision. Really, really nice quality of life changes. Really, really nice. You can now tune the dead zones on your ability buttons. This is kind of interesting. Now, dead zones, I guess, a thing where they're making it so it's kind of easier. It's easier to aim the spells, it seems like. When press the ability button, there is a small dead zone where small finger movements will not trigger, trigger manual aiming of the ability. Decrease the size if you accidentally aim. Decrease the size if the spells are also targeting uh, when you um, intend to aim. So it's a bit of a weird one. It's like you kind of see it here. On your ability buttons. The bigger the dead zone, the harder it is to accidentally aim when tapping abilities. We've added more clarity. The, it's, it's a bit of a weird one, so the more dead zone you want will basically mean that... So you can see that when he's activating the ability here, he's trying to move the ability, but sometimes sometimes when you get little slight movements, the ability moves, but I think this just, this just restricts people, in my opinion. It might be good on someone like Ezreal for the skill shots and everything, but sometimes you, want, you need to kind of predict where the enemy is moving. Because this is kind of a bad example. Because if an enemy's moving and you've got this whole dead zone thing, it's just going to be target locked on the champion at all times. But by the time that you've activated the skill or something, the champion might have moved out of that position anyway. So, I mean, it's, it's a nice change to be fair. It makes it kind of easier for people if they don't want to, if they want to make it like, kind of like target lock for spells, I guess you can say. Um... It's kind of cool, but I'm not really too sure about that. When neutral objectives spawn on the minimap, and you can now optionally hide player names in game. It's a kind of cool one. Or choose to display champions. You can hide people's names. You can do champions, so you can kind of hide other people's names and not really know who they are. This is the biggest thing of this patch by far. So huge. We're going to be running a short test for a feature we're calling position preference. Now, as you can see on this screen, this is position preference. Very, very similar to roll queue on PC League of Legends. So you select an order of your position preference. So it could be jungle first, it could be duo, which is, I'm guessing, AD, mid, solo, support. Or you can click on any position in the bottom left-hand corner. Again, this is a huge, massive change to, to Wild Rift and something that we've been asking for for a long, long time. But there's a bit of a difference between this and PC League. PC League, you select two positions. You select two roles. You can pick either mid or AD or jungle and AD, something like that. You can only pick two roles. In this, they're making it so you have your highest priority at number one and your least priority at number five, which obviously it says here your position is not guaranteed. So it's a position order. So they're making it so they try and get you to get the highest priority position. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Oh. Excuse me, sorry, the highest pri um, priority position that you want, but it's not guaranteed. Sometimes you might get number five, which could be the duo lane. Sometimes you might get number four. So, I mean, it's a welcome change nonetheless. And the matchmaker will try to assign you one of your preferred positions in the lobby. If you don't want to pick manually, we'll look back at your recent history and base it off that instead. We're only running this for a few days to collect data on how well it's working. So you'll find a separate queue in the Really, room. really cool. For anyone who wants to help us test, None of your matches, ratings, or event progress will carry over from this queue. So give it a try. This is pretty cool. So they're basically adding a test for a few days. Just to basically test it out, which I'm going to be doing 100%. I want to see how the the roll queue you know, kind of influences the whole game and how the whole system works. So they're not adding it to rank straight away. They're not adding it to normal queue straight away, which is really, really nice. Uh, they're basically you know, making it a test for a few days to see how it goes, which is, I think, the right way of doing it for sure. Iterating on the system, and if it's going well, we'll be adding it to rank at a later date. One quick really, really nice. This test won't be available in the Americas yet, as the game will still be too new. But we'll be sure to keep you all... Unfortunately, it won't happen in America, but still, nonetheless, it's just a test, which is really, really nice. New skins. So many cool skins. The premier first to Wild Rift skin line called Stargazer. Look at that chat. The Stargazer oh. is a archivist who can see and improve oh. fate by studying the stars. Beautiful. Joining the roster are Camille. Stargazer Camille. Got a beautiful the Twisted Fate. Fate skin. Oh, my. These skins are absolutely beautiful. And Soraka. Absolutely beautiful. To celebrate the launch. And of course, 
We won't leave you without another quick look at some other skins coming soon. God King Darius. This skin is absolutely amazing, by the way. New legendary skin coming for Darius. Got a big, massive wolf. Absolutely amazing Darius skin. The Blood Moon skin line. So you got Blood Moon Diana as well, as well as Kedon. Corky Corky. I know someone that will love this skin. Absolutely beautiful skin. What a lovely skin. Draven Draven. Kind of like a little meme skin with the Draven head. And Scorched Earth, Earth Renekton. Oh, these skins are... Uh, right, just take my money. Just take more of my money, please. <laughs> it's just so many cool skins. This is another cool addition, I think. Will be very... Which will be uh, pretty cool. A way to get more stuff just for playing. Here's how it works. The wild pass works just like you'd expect. Leveling up as you play. Rewarding kind of like a battle pass in a way. Now, that's a big thing. So, yeah, a cool level 50 reward, which is a new skin, which I'm just going to show in a second. But I just want to look at this. So, you have the free rewards, which you have the blue bots, the Poro coins. Um, this looks like a um, blue mots boost and an XP boost, which is really, really cool. But you also have premium rewards as well. So, you have, um, I'm guessing you can play for like a premium upgrade for the wild pass. You have champion selection chests. You have, um, looks like posture checks. Uh, chest, sorry. Um, ball balls, emotes, icons. You know, everything like that as well, which is really, really cool. So you can get a upgraded version of the pass. Like I said, very, very similar to the battle pass. You have a free version, a paid version. So really, really nice. Really, really cool thing to add into the game. And other goodies along the way. You can upgrade your wild pass at any point to claim all the content you've earned so far. And if you don't decide to upgrade... All players can still earn blue motes and portal coins when the pass totally free of charge. Really, really cool. There's also the wild pass. Yeah, as you can see here, so there's a wild pass which unlocks premium rewards. We don't know how much it's going to cost yet because it says owned. But then you also have wild pass elite, which unlock premium rewards plus five levels and plus bonus um, elite missions as well, which is pretty cool. Some extra missions and extra there you go. So you have like missions here that you can complete. And then when you complete these missions, I guess it just makes you level up faster on the wild pass. Reaching level 50, which is pretty cool. Grants an exclusive skin, Explorer Jax, to show the world how far you've come. How cool is that skin as well? Look how beefy he is. He's such a beast. What a lovely there. skin. There are some extra bonus rewards to help you add more. He also have bonus rewards. This very much reminds me of the Team Fight Tactics pass as well, the TFT pass. If people don't know, um, they have a pass every single season, and with that pass. It basically becomes rewards that you get every single time. Then you have this bonus one, which allows you to unlock bonus rewards. Again, another cool change. Or another we'll cool addition, I should say. Second rank season in April. Confirm confirmation there, second rank season is starting in April, not at the end of March. Some people thought it was going to be the end of March. We're getting it in April. I'm guessing it's going to be around the start or the middle of April. Because 2.2 releases um, next Monday, which is the 29th of March. And then this will probably give it... They'll probably give it a week, I would say, to like see how things go, make sure there's no bugs, and then the next rank season will be available. You still have time, chat. You still have time to get the ranks that you want. And lastly, one of the most requested and one of the best game modes in League of Legends is ARAM. Oh, I'm so, so excited. Again, temporary test, but expected. For those of you unfamiliar with ARAM, it's a shorter, faster paced game mode set on the Howling Abyss, a bridge atop a bottomless crevasse where warriors once fought to defend Look, it, it's a fiesta. It's a absolute fiesta. Five against five, all one lane. There's one minion wave that just goes back and, you know, back and forth. And it's absolute fiesta. It's a really good way to learn champions, to have a bit of fun with friends. And I'm hoping that they add um custom games like custom a rams because this is a, this is something i want to get you guys involved in custom a rams on streams which would be really really fun um custom a ram maybe videos as well some highlights which would be pretty cool um again a lovely addition to the game that we've been wanting for a long long time which is really really awesome so cool yeah as i said random so it's all random all mids Really, really cool. To get a champion you like better. There's Such a cool addition. Part summoner spell called Mark Dash. Use Mark to throw a snowball. Mark and Dash, a ability yeah. exclusive to Howling Dash. Abyss. Similar to Beast. Which is again really, really cool. Melee fighters and tanks can use this to instantly get the party started. Now this is just the first step. Not everything is going to be balanced or polished, 
So we'll need a lot of feedback to make this a better experience. Really, really cool. Also, I'm going to be playing this a lot, by the way. This is it's such a fun game mode. Features like ARAM specific loadouts so that we can get your feedback on the gameplay soon. We've got a ton more information on Love it. and our approach to new modes in the blog post we just released. Beautiful. You love to see it. Dev diary. Let us know what else you want to see. Enjoy patch 2.2. What a patch, by the way. What a what a brilliant patch this is. We have roll queue. We have new champions. We have ARAM coming. It's it's insane. And then you can see the little shopkeeper here. This is a shopkeeper for ARAM. Um, a, a ton of new changes, chat. Uh, the only change that I'm not really too sure about is the AD carry change. Uh, it looks like they're nerfing attack speed, which they're bringing out all these assassins and all these top laners, all these tank items. You know, everything. Where's the love for the AD carries? Where's our Essence Revolve? Where's our new AD carry champions, you know? Um, I would have liked a bit more love to the AD carries, but nonetheless, a great patch overall. Really, really excited. Let me know down below what you think of this patch and what are the best changes for you? What change that you're looking forward to the most? Um, for me, it's definitely Roll Queue. I definitely want to give that a try. Um, cl very close by, uh, followed by ARAM as well. Like I said, hoping we get some more information soon on some of these changes. Um, yeah, make sure you all stay tuned for that. And as always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Take care.